Today, my brother and my sister, the text says, the text says that they were in a place called Gilgal. They were there healing. And uh, the Lord calls them to eat, to eat, to eat, to eat the feast of the Passover and then to eat uh, the produce of the land. The key to understanding this, though, is that God made them to rest, made them sit down, made them wait and heal. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm resting for my next. <laughs> Tell somebody else, I'm resting for my next. They didn't get it. Touch yourself and say, self. I'm resting for my next. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and you may be seated in the presence of your God and my God. I am resting for my next. I'm resting for my next. Well, good morning, family. My brothers and my sisters, at the outset of this message, I would like to suggest to all of us that all of the things that you have been through in your yesterday happened for the purpose of preparing you for what God has in store for you in your future. Make no mistake about it. Please don't be deceived. Your steps have been ordered by God himself. And the totality of all of your experiences are working together to produce his expected end for your life. All of the disappointment, all of the demeaning experiences, all of the deep pain, and all of the discipline that you have encountered and endured have great value in the process of personal growth and development. And these things are God's way of getting you ready for the manifestation of the destiny that you have envisioned and the fulfillment of the promises that God has made to you. Are you listening to me? Everything that you've been through, the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, the demeaning experiences, the rough times, the bad times, the letdowns, the put downs, all of these things, and I mean all of them, are working together, as Paul said, for your good, because you love God. You ain't perfect, but you love him, and you are definitely called according to his purpose. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. My brothers and my sisters, what I have found to be true about seeing your God-ordained future is oftentimes there is a tendency to confuse a clear view with a short leap. That is to say that when we see what God has planned and purpose for our lives, we are tempted to rush right into our next season. We forget that God is a God of timing. And the what will happen, but it will happen when he has predetermined that it will happen. Don't ever confuse a clear view with a short leap. Don't ever think that because you can see it clearly, you can get to it quickly. Don't ever think that because you know it's God that you can move on your own inspiration into it. The truth of the matter is so many of us have made the mistake of confusing a clear view with a short leap. How many times have we seen it and jumped out there only to find out that the timing was wrong and the season was not yet? How many times have we seen it clearly, knew that it was God, knew that it was for us, knew that it was the thing that God had purposed and promised for our lives, only to understand uh, that when we leaped, we did not have enough velocity to cross the spasm and the gap between where we are and where we're going. Somebody in here looking for a good place to shout, I'm getting ready to give it to you now. Because even though you have leaped and you confuse the clear jump, the clear view with the short leap, when you found yourself going down, God supplied a branch so you could catch yourself before you hit the bottom. 
am I talking to anybody in here who if I stop preaching right now you got your word thank God for the branches thank God for the ledges thank God for the stuff that he allowed me to grab hold to when I leaped before I looked when I jumped before I got a confirmation when I moved before God told me yes if I'm talking to you you ought to tell me to go ahead and preach so what the what will happen but the when somebody ought to shout the when it will happen when he has predetermined that it will happen I know I'm right about it one need look no further Tim than the words that God spoke to the prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 through 3 you remember God has made Habakkuk a promise about what he would do for Israel he said to his Habakkuk he said I'm going to deliver Delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. He said they're on the bottom now, but I'm getting ready to usher them to the top. He said they are in trouble now, but I'm going to end their days of trouble. Habakkuk looked at the present situation. He looked at the present circumstances and begins to complain against God. God, you said you were going to bring us out, but it looks like our enemies are getting stronger by the day. You said that we were going to be on top, but we're still on the bottom as it is. You said you were going to give us victory but it looks like we're being defeated God hears Habakkuk's complaint he hears his argument and then watch this when when God does not answer him Habakkuk says well it seems like I'm wrong and God's right he said what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up on my rampart I'm going to get back in my place I'm going to stop acting like God is me and I'm God and he says I'm going to stand there and I'm going to wait to hear what he says to me when he positions himself to hear God listen to what God tells the prophet he says to him write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it for the vision is for an appointed time but at the end it will surely come it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come and it will not tarry translation Habakkuk you need to understand that what I said I'm going to do but I'm not going to do it when you want me to do it uh, it won't happen when you want it to happen but it will happen when I say so if y'all didn't get that here's the other translation Habakkuk get somewhere and sat down oh God it's going to happen but you're not under my control uh, I'm not under your control you're under my control touch your neighbor say neighbor it's going to happen uh, so may I respectfully say to you get somewhere sat down 